The Cosmia is probably one of the best things happening within the modern fantasy landscape, and it's all thanks to fantasy author Brandon Sanderson. While he by no means invented the concept of a shared universe, he certainly has popularized it within the fantasy reading community. If you're not sure exactly what the Cosmia is, I recommend you check out my previous video I did on it. It explains it in basic terms and it explains just exactly what the Cosmia is without becoming too bogged down by intricate details. Now, I briefly touched on the different shards and their worlds in that video, but I'd like to take a more in-depth look at it now than I did at the time. So what exactly are shards? Well, simply put, shards are the fragments of Adenalsium. As I explained in that previous video, Adenalsium was the ultimate godly being and creator of the Cosmere. And when Adenalsium was destroyed or shattered, the 16 shards of it were absorbed by 16 different individuals. These individuals took these shards and claimed their power and aspects. Once they became shards, they all split up and went to different worlds within the Cosmere. If the shards decided to invest themselves in a world, they would ultimately make that world their shard world. This means that the individual shards would alter the way the world and the magic within it functioned. The investiture or innate magical energy of the planet would become one with the investiture of the shard. But now that we've got that covered, and we've covered just exactly what shards are, we can actually focus down on the individual shards and their worlds. Devotion and Dominion The shards of both Devotion and Dominion decided to invest in the same planet. They're the shards of the world of Cell, on which the story of Elantris takes place. Both of these shards have been destroyed and splintered by Odium long before any human civilizations existed. While the shards and vessels may be effectively dead, the investiture still exists and thus forms the basis for the magic systems on Cell. For a further look into the magic systems of Cell, I recommend reading Elantris and the Emperor's Soul. Ruin and Preservation The story of Ruin and Preservation is probably one of my favorites from the Cosmere. Unlike most shards, Ruin and Preservation are actually unique in that they are direct opposites and complements to one another. They've been invested on the planet of Scadriel, the planet where all the Mistborn books take place. Both of these shards have a deep history with one another and during the events of the first Mistborn trilogy, a lot about them and their roles are discovered. For those of you who have read the Mistborn trilogy, you may be interested to know that despite the ending in the Hero of Ages, these are still two different shards. I won't go into it any further to avoid spoilers, but I think it might be of some interest since I fully expected it to be considered only one shard from there on out. I highly recommend the Mistborn books as they deal quite directly with the story of these two shards. Cultivation, Honor and Odium We've dealt with some die shardic worlds so far. That means worlds with two shards invested in it. Well, now we're going on to a world with three shards, though I wouldn't call it tri-shardic exactly. Roshar is a very tumultuous world, and if you've never looked into the Stormlight Archive, I recommend checking out my Before You Read video on it. It should give you a nice primer on everything before you start. Now, on Roshar, the Shards of Cultivation and Honor initially invested themselves there first, but after some time, Odium came along. Now, Odium had already killed a few different shards before and was thus quite a threat. Luckily, Honor found a way to bind Odium to Braze, Roshar's sister planet, and thus kept him in the Rosharan system unable to attack other shards. Unfortunately, this didn't work out too well for Honor, but I won't say exactly why because of spoilers. But you now essentially have the investiture of three different shards interacting on one story in one planet. If you haven't read the Stormlight Archive yet, I highly recommend you give it a shot as soon as you're able. Endowment Endowment is the shard taken up and invested on the planet of Nalthus. Endowment is quite a mysterious shard and not much is known about her. We know that her power and intent has to do with bestowing or imbuing power or magic upon others. If you read the book Warbreaker, you'll see how this comes into play with the magic system and with concepts like the Awakened. I really enjoyed Warbreak as a novel though, and I sincerely hope we'll see more from that world and more from the Shard. I'm very curious to see more information of the less well-known Shards come to light. Autonomy Autonomy is the Shard invested in the world of Taldane, 
or rather she's invested in one of the sons and thus has influence over the whole system. Autonomy's influence mostly shows itself in the White Sand graphic novels as those are set within the Taldane system. There's not much that's known about Autonomy, but through her actions, it's clear that she's very isolationist and has locked off her world from being infiltrated by any outside forces. Ambition Ambition is another shard about which not a lot is known. We do know that Ambition was once either invested in or briefly stayed at and influenced the world of Threnody. Now, we know the Shard was killed by Odium a long time ago, but the effects of Ambition's influence can still be felt on Threnody. The novella, Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell, is the only work of Brandon set in that world, so it's not one that's well known by most people. I would be interested to see if we got any further information on the Shard of Ambition, though at this point it seems unlikely. The Remaining Shards Finally, there are a handful of shards that we only know about by name, thanks to their mention within the Stormlight Archive. These shards are Invention, Mercy, Valor, and Whimsy. We don't know the state of these shards, whether invested or any other information about them really. In addition to this, we also have another two shards that we don't even have the names to. We know there are 16 shards, but so far I've only named 14 of them. That means there's still two shards we haven't heard of in the slightest. I think this is quite indicative of just how early we are in the Cosmere's lifespan. We've still got very far to go and a lot to uncover. And I don't know about you, but I'm extremely excited to see where this goes. But that's been it for me today. I tried to keep this video brief and to the point. The Cosmere isn't really something you can compress into one video, and I think most of the information is best acquired through gradual exposure to the different works within the Cosmere itself. So, if you're still a little lost, don't worry about that. I recommend you just take your time and read Cosmere books. If you want more in-depth detail though, I recommend the Shardcast by the 17th Shard YouTube channel. They do great breakdowns and in-depth analyses of everything Cosmere related, so definitely check them out. Anyway, that's been enough from me. Thank you very much for watching guys, I really do appreciate it. And if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. This has been Raven, and I will see you next time.